Well, it's all. Chatasia. My name is Joe Gaines. I'm a Choctaw from Southeast Oklahoma. In the year 2020, when the world's a little bit different, that's why I wanted to show that uh, mask wearing is important for us, important for the people, that the people can live, literally. Literally, yes, yeah. exactly. And do I have your permission to record this interview? Yes, you do. Thank you. Uh, what brought you to this event today? A friend of mine uh, told me about it, that it was in this area, and I thought it's a great opportunity to just support the people that are putting it on and also to hear what other cultures have to say about Columbus as well because his actions affected the entire world and as a matter of fact it's still affecting the world. Some in a positive, some in a negative manner. Absolutely. And so are you from D.C.? Do you live here or did you travel here? I'm from southeast Oklahoma. I've lived here probably about five years. Okay. Yeah. And are you here with any organization or did you come no, I'm not really with an org. Yeah, matter of fact, I am with uh, Rebrand, Rebrand Washington Football, and with no, no stadium, no name change in relation to Washington Football franchise, as well as with Choctaw Nation. That's a very big yeah, no, it's yeah. good. <laughs> it is. It is. And so, are you involved, or were you involved with the American Indian Movement at all? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. What's your involvement with? I just go support them. Really, I'm. There's, there is a membership, but it's just kind of loosely like. But I, I'm, I would say I'm a member because I support them and I do work with them. I speak at their engagements when I can. So what, you said you speak at their engagements. What does that look like or what other work do you do with them? Uh, pretty much just like this about the, uh, uh, injustices against Native Americans. Okay. And how long have you been involved with that? Oh, that's been a... 30 years, 40 years, ever, ever since I was about 20. Okay, yeah. okay. so how did you get started? Well, I, uh, I got started after I left the, uh, getting out of high school. Got out of high school and started experiencing the world for myself and started being around other people of, uh, of my culture. And uh, I should probably say there's, for Native Americans, I don't want to try to uh, separate us or anything, but not all natives are as traditional, or aren't traditional at all, because of assimilation, which again, Christopher Columbus brought about, and acculturation, acculturation brought that to uh, indigenous people. I'm kind of, I consider myself a traditionalist. I adhere to their uh, ideology, philosophy, and spirituality of the uh, Native Americans, Native American spirituality. So not all, just because you're native, you're not going to talk like me, you're not going to act like me, you're not going to look like me. So in that regard, I'm kind of still mad at Columbus because he kind of separated even my people. Because even among my own people, Choctaw Nation, I'm kind of looked at kind of with skepticism a little bit. I have long hair and I kind of say, oh, Christopher Columbus, he wasn't no <gasps> In school, we're taught Christopher Columbus was a great man. He founded the new world, and he's a great explorer. He did all these wonderful things for the country and the world. I get out into the, after graduating high school, I, you know, I started conceptualizing that what he'd done. I started reading books and hearing what other people were talking about, and going to events like this, and you know, maybe the history books weren't right at what we taught in high school. <laughs> so I'm, I'm learning that, I'm conceptualizing that. And okay, well that wasn't good. Well, what about some of the other things I may have learned, and, and some of the things that you know is not true, you know, and the government things I even learned at home. I love my family, and uh, even with the teachers, that always believe in uh, the United States government. They're here for your best interest. The police will always protect you. Always listen to them. Obey them. Always obey the rules. And I get out into the world and. Golly, <laughs> and even now today, look at what the world is. Believe the police. If I'm get, if I get pulled over, I'm putting my hands out the window because uh, I know I'm not like everybody else, uh, and I want to take precautions that I'm not doing anything. I don't want you to be scared of me. Yeah, that's especially like thinking back in June, this issue just keeps Yes, it's really and uh, lot. It's really dangerous for. Uh, 
anybody really that's not probably of their socioeconomic class. So, you know, we have to be careful about that. And that's, and to me, to bring it kind of a little bit around back to uh, Christopher Columbus, that's the mentality and ideology that has come forth 1492, 1592, 16, 17, 18, 19, what's that been, 530 years ago, something like that. And so here we are still arguing and debating and getting mad at each other about something that happened 1492. Yeah, that's a good point. So last year, the Tennessee government officially replaced Columbus Day with Indigenous People's Day. Why do you think that change happened when it did? Uh, there was a lot of people that was involved in that for a lot of different years. I, so many, I don't even know them all. But people like y'all being right here at this event helped change that. Doing these videos and uh, Broadcasting it out to millions of people, that helped change that. And I'm sure Congress people seen it and, and kind of started realizing that. And the history that come forth with that, the, the real history, not what we taught in high school, not what I was taught. Now, here it is. He came to the New World and four, uh, had four voyages. The last voyage, he was took back to Spain in chains as a criminal. He was arrested for crimes against humanity. Finally, <laughs> Uh, you know, here, here, uh, uh, eight million people died and was murdered, murdered in 20 years in the Caribbean. Eight million people? You have to really put forth a lot of effort to kill eight million people. I'd get, yeah, you're going to get tired of it, I would think. Your arms, it's going to get tired of killing, hacking, eight million people. I didn't even know he was tried at the war. I never learned that. Yeah, well. He was taken back to Spain. He wasn't technically, he wasn't tried, he was arrested to say correctly. He was taken back in chains, arrested, taken back in chains, put before uh, Queen Isabella of Spain, because remember, he was under her government and funded by her government. So he's taken back to Queen Isabella, and, and uh, he was probably about, what, 65, 70 at that point in time. And uh, just out of courtesy to him, okay, we exonerate you but never return to the new world and you know don't go, ever go back there again so and uh, history books say that he kind of died in obscurity and even kind of impoverished a little bit yeah so he was arrested as a uh, uh, crime, crimes against humanity but it, it was never never come to fruition but still he was even uh, de la, uh, Bartholomew de la Casa uh, was a, a, a Catholic Catholic priest at that time, and he writes, uh, even before my very eyes in one day, I watched the Spaniards kill, rape, maim, murder 3,000 people in one day by chopping them. Sent, they had contests, how many, how, with one sweep of a sword, how many people can you cut in half? God, and pouring boiling soap, boiling soap down your throat. Hold on, I know it gets worse. And that's Bartholomew, that's not me talking, that's Bartholomew de la Casa. He's a priest. You gonna believe a priest? And he said, uh, they fed infants to dogs, picking up an infant, two one-year-old, and, I know it's kind of horrific, and taking their babies by their feet, and bashing them in their head against that tree. I mean, these, I know it. I'm not lying. I'm a, I, I, some, I tell people I'm not lying. The truth's bad No, How much worse can you get than ba child abuse? I can't, you can't get any worse. It's not me saying it. It's Delicata history reflected oh, upon I that. Yeah. So, and what that does for us today is racism isn't, uh, we're not inherently brought up with that. It's an ideology brought forth from that time. Bam, bam, bam. To this household today. And so, what? How do we? How do we kind of move forward with that a little bit? Is the question. We as uh, victims, Native American people, and not just Native American people. It's not just Native issue. It's a humanitarian issue. That's why I like naming y'all's truck, humanitarian truck. I like that because it is a humanitarian issue. Black Lives Matter is a humanitarian issue. Any socially conscious injustice uh, issue affecting people is a humanitarian issue. So what's that do for us and how can we get over that? There's a great question for a lot of natives, since I'm native, since I know more about that. 
there's, uh, I like to remind people that there was a Holocaust, an American Holocaust. I mean, we're familiar with the World War II, Jewish Holocaust. Oh, Hitler was a bad guy, boy, he's terrible. Ah. Well, America had their own Holocaust. And it, st yeah, and, it started, and it started with Christopher Columbus, that's part of the Americas, North, South, Central America. That's part of the Americas, the Western Hemisphere. So we bring it to the United States before it was a country. The same ideology comes with it, that people of color are not human. So if they're not human, they're an animal. And we can treat, and Christians, oh, I'm sorry, but that's history again, because they brought the bot that Catholic Church sponsored all that, mm, I'll just say it, murder. Because if you want to read what the uh, uh, Papa Bull, May 9th, 8th, May, when was that, 9th, 1940, no, wait a minute, hold on, get my date. 14, May 1494, Christopher got her, not 1492, 1493. May of 1493, I know, it took a little bit. But the Catholic Church wrote a pop of bull, which is like a declaration to the Catholic Church. And it read something like, hear ye, hear ye. Tell them to a bunch of Taino Indians that don't even understand Spanish anyway. I'm from, yeah, by right of the Catholic Church, we are here to uh, uh, persuade you to become, or force you to come become a ca uh, uh, Christian. And if you do not, we will inflict all, upon, uh, all the harm we can upon you. And it will not be our fault. And it will absolve us of sin. And God will not hold us accountable. To, un to uncomprehending people. <laughs> so that's how they can justify murdering 3,000 people in one day. Bashing a baby's head. Because they're not human yeah it's a dog killing shooting a dog right now so the ideology again comes to the United States it's, yeah bring it a little bit closer to home we're in the United States so they brought that same ideology with them and so did Christianity because in books uh, history again reflects that the, uh, the ma this massacre happened because the Bible said that uh, the world will be, God said, all Christians, the world will be before you. Some paraphrasing, I don't know exactly what it was, but something like, if I, I, your enemies will be smitten down before you and I'll, I will pave the way and you'll be right. And in the name of Christianity, you can do this to all the heathens. Well, natives were heathens because we never even heard about Christianity. <laughs> Not our fault, <laughs> but still, they're going to kill us, rape us, murder us, child abuse, the whole thing. When they, what was that, 1650s or sometime, whenever they got here, all the way. Okay. Manifest destiny all the way from East Coast to the West Coast. And that's what they wrote. That, and even history, but it reflects that. Uh, William Bradford wrote that when he was on the East Coast that, uh, yeah, we did this. We, uh, killed all them Pequots and burned their houses and shot them and cut them down when they come out. And it was a great day. It was a great day for Christians. Golly. All the way across the whole United States. So how do you think, or what, what's your take on the situation today in comparison to back then? It's something, one thing that, uh, that kind of helps me, it kind of you know, helps my spirit a little bit. Okay, we're getting recognition and we're pulling away from a murder and making it more something symbolic that uh, not just uh, indigenous people can feel good about, but all of humanity can kind of feel good about that. We're getting away from a murder. I mean, I would think an average person would think, that's what you thought about Hitler. Okay, now let's get away from Christopher Columbus as a murderer and kind of make it, this our own national event somehow. That, because Christopher Columbus, as he just said, never was in America, the United States anyways. So, and maybe we can find a little comfort in that, let our heart know that, okay, these events and all these people and the work that y'all have done and are doing and will continue to do, that it's kind of come to fruition a little bit, maybe slowly. Maybe it might take me like me. It took me a little bit to understand that Christopher Columbus did that. When I first heard it, yeah, I didn't hear it in school. 
I read it in a book somewhere and I said, he did that? There was no reference, so okay. Next book I'll read, next time I talk to somebody, I talk to a school teacher, did that happen? Oh yeah, yeah, read, look at this, look at that, read this. And I started beginning to, it did happen. And this is where our kind of like, some people call it fire starters, where you kind of get a, a fire starter within your soul, within your spirit, within your mind, within your conscious. That, that did really did happen. Now how can I, since I'm responsible for that information now, what do I do with that information? And hopefully, if there's a message that I'd like to leave anybody, well, what are you going to do with that information now? Since you're charged with that, now you're going to be responsible for that, or, or, or are we taking this time to do this? And you just kind of go, oh, well, I don't care. Oh, that's, that's oh, wow, I didn't know that. That was, wow, I didn't know that. And just shove it aside and never care to use it again. So my, I would challenge somebody that be responsible for that information and be that person that sits around uh, the table, dinner table or the conversation with your friends and tell them what happened. Christopher Columbus was a murderer. Yeah, what am I going to do with that? What did you do with that information? When you first started learning, and that's not right. I'm going to have to do something about that. I've got, I got to stand up. I can't take that. My heart, my spirit, my soul, my conscience won't allow me to take that. And that's what events like this start doing for people. It kind of starts molding and taking shape. Starts right here, concentric circles, because all things of power move in a circle in Indian communities. It gets a little bigger, gets a little bigger, bigger to the whole world, to the whole universe, in fact. Because that power kind of moves energy, right? And it touches people in different ways. And that's what natives pray about. That God, I'll, say, I'll use the word God, that's not what we call it. Him, it, her, whatever it is. That God touches people more than we can and can do more for people than, you know, me being mad at them or preaching at them all the time. Well, God can touch them in a little different way in their heart and in their mind, and they can start learning their own self and being charged with that information and using it in a positive manner. Because I know there's, you know, hatred begets hatred. And that's what a lot of natives feel. That's what I feel, you still do, but I try to channel in a positive manner, not like I used to, you know, I thought I could beat you up so I'm the winner. Then somebody told me, well, that's what they thought. <laughs> that's what they thought. That's what they think. You know, that's what uh, dictators think. You know, just because I can beat you up, I'm right. And so I thought, well, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be what I despise. So I started to say, okay, I need to take a different approach to this. I started talking to my elders and said, well, why don't you, you know, you're a pretty good speaker. Why don't you start speaking a little bit at events just like this? Yeah, so this event right here. I would have to think since Malcolm X is synonymous with social conscious and with social change, him being the person that he was uh, on the forefront, you know, speaking hard truths. That's I would think that's why it's here. I don't know. Yeah, that's I imagine that's what I mean. It's a hard it's a hard thing to have to relearn because a lot of it's core values. I learned it in school. I learned it from my teachers, my principals that I trusted. I, my family, my father, people in my, my own church were telling me, you know, Christi, uh, Christopher Columbus was good. And these are core beliefs that we learned early on and are deep within us. So when you get out and you kind of say, oh no, my, my pastor, he told me it was Christopher Columbus was a good man and that's, that's a hard thing for me to have to take. You know, my pastor told me something that wasn't true. He probably didn't do it in a bad way, malicious way. But it was nevertheless, he told me something that wasn't true. So how, am I, how do I change that? And it's not just with Christopher Columbus. It's with other things too. It's got, with core beliefs that the government's always right. Well, not, been, <laughs> not so much, man. Right. And the police are always there to protect you. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Not so right. right. Are, so that's the core beliefs that I have to overcome within myself. Yeah. Not just then, but every time, every day. And so those are all the questions I had for you. Is there anything else you want to say that we didn't cover? Yeah, just be mindful of, you know, where you want to be in this world, what your place is. That's kind of what Native culture teaches. Be mindful of uh, 
the world and even a bigger uh, perspective the universe and what's your place in the universe what, you know, why was I here why am I here what am I supposed to do how am I supposed to feel how am I supposed to change you know have a relationship with your higher power whoever whatever that is and you know and be in tune with the energy around you because that's all we are is energy we've got little molecules of atoms of energy flowing through it we're talking through it right now the uh, energy you breathe out the energy I breathe in so in, in that way, the saying among Native American spiritualists is that we are all, uh, we are all related in, in that way and in that energy. We are all related on this earth and that's the way the Creator and, and the universe really, truly, the biggest picture there is, we are all related to the universe. So we can see ourselves inside of that. We can shut our eyes see a swirling mass of galaxies and universe inside of it and going, wow.